I went over to London actually for a working holiday for about 18, uh, 18 months, but I finished up staying for almost four years and it was about the third year, just under the third year when I met Mel and uh, we uh, were engaged and married within 12 months of that meeting in, in Australia. That was in the year 2000, and she was 55, and um, that was a breast cancer, it was a stage 3, fairly aggressive cancer, and she had part of her breast removed, and the lymph nodes, and uh, she recovered from that very well, and to all intents and purposes had survived that, that cancer. very much. Uh, her, her general health was, was perfect. Um, rarely got colds or flu or anything like that. And uh, it did come out of the blue when we went into the doctor's surgery and after Mel had found the lump in her breast during, well, going to the toilet during the middle of one night. And, uh, and the doctor told us that uh, after the biopsy that it was and it did surprise us. Very openly, she uh, didn't appear to go downhill at all in my mind from that very first meeting with the GP and uh, we virtually told all our friends what had, ha what had happened and uh, our GP also did an alternative medicines as well and uh, Mel embraced that and um, we were advised to go and do medication and meditation uh, lessons uh, which we did and, uh, and as a result of that we actually started to take on Buddhist philosophy. I personally thought that Mel having survived the previous one, my initial thoughts were that she, she would get through this one as well. But, um, but it was a very, I was told, rare and, and aggressive um, tumor cancer. And uh, it was diagnosed as a uterine serous. I just supported her in every way. Um, it was a case of uh, making sure that um, she looked after herself, she ate the right foods, um, kept her spirits up. Uh, we thought initially that she might, have, might get through this, although I had looked on the internet for details of this particular cancer and I, I knew from that that uh, the um, chances of survival for this cancer were pretty low. Uh, Mel wasn't aware of that initially anyway. And she got through the, the chemotherapy really well. Her blood marker tests uh, came down to normal. And at the end of the chemo sessions, um, we thought everything had gone really well. But it was after the first blood test after the chemo had finished and the cancer had started to come back again and uh, it was obvious that it was going to uh, move fairly rapidly actually. And um, some months after that uh, we were told that her condition was terminal and um, that they couldn't do anything more for her. Didn't seem to affect Mel even being given that diagnosis, she still remained pretty positive. It, it seemed to affect her only for minutes before she was back up and, and running again. We went back to our original GP uh, thinking that we could follow similar regimes to, to the previous cancer. and. Um, we were offered some alternative medicines, uh, but Mel didn't seem to think that they were working and we, we stopped those eventually. So the main alternative thing that we did 
it was basically just keep up our, our Buddhist teachings and med meditation. And um, we, in fact, uh, some months after Mel was given the diagnosis uh, that the condition was terminal, we uh, actually uh, had a affirmation of our wedding place uh, at our house with our friends and, and that was carried out by our Buddhist nun and that, that was a, a terrific day actually. Mainly through meditation um, we were able to still the mind and uh, that helped I think with the eliminating any stress and worry. Mel was offered palliative chemo, like that she could do that whenever she felt like it. And Mel said, no, I don't want that. Um, I prefer to have a better quality of life than to go through the, um, the pain and anguish of, of chemotherapy again. And uh, we, uh, she just got on with her life, basically. Uh, she was laughing and smiling and she kept up all her normal daily daily routine with her friends and um, I, I never saw her, I worked from home but I never saw her during the day, she was always out having coffee or something with people and sometimes she didn't even feel like eating but she'd still go to the cafe or the restaurant or whatever. I just helped Mel get on with her life, I, I didn't let myself sort of show any distress or anything. I, I kept there with her. She was guiding me, in fact. That's what happened. She was uh, an absolute inspiration to all her friends and she was an inspiration to me as well. So she virtually helped me get through that period of time. Incre incredibly strong right to the end, absolutely. Uh, amazed everybody, really. That came across her, even in the hospital, so that the nurses were sent to me to be concentrating on Mel because they, they liked her. That was her nature. <laughs>